Hey, welcome back to Square Body Stuff. Today we've got more of kind of an instructional type video. Uh, the topic is cold starting your carbureted vehicle. Uh, of course, it be square bodies because that's what we do here. Uh, we're going to start with Buddy, move on to Cream Puff, and then last of all, we're going to start up the little short bed step side I've got in the barn. Uh, three different scenarios for you, so hopefully this will, will help you guys out if you have any questions about. Um, about starting up a cold cold car rated vehicle. comment on one of my videos he was curious uh, to how I cold start my my square bodies which they're all carbureted because um, he, he has a, a, a truck apparently without any choke on it whatsoever and this is the same setup as what buddy's got there's no choke horn nothing on buddy uh, so I, I thought well that might make a pretty good video there's not not everybody's used to starting up carburetors this is you know the fuel injection has been out for what 20 some years uh so there's a lot of a lot of younger guys maybe out there that not real familiar with the proper procedures on starting up carbureted engines so we're going to go through that i'm going to start out with buddy i've been sitting here all morning cold uh not gonna this ain't a cold start show off you know my big lumpy can because he's not canned up or nothing got a little bit but it's just more of an instructional video to maybe help some of you folks out that may or may not know if you're starting your vehicle up right with the carburetor so we'll get started on this and i'm going to show you after we get done with buddy i'm going to show you how i start up my other two square bodies uh they're a little bit different setup so hopefully this will help you guys out and I'm going to start out by taking off this air cleaner and the uh, intake tube here. Get rid of all this garbage out of the way. So I'm going to get up in here and show you what kind of a carburetor setup I've got on this thing. Hey, what we got here, folks, is uh, Buddy's dirty old carburetor on his dirty old big block. Built it about 10 years ago. I put this carburetor together longer than that. It has been longer than that because I had it on a, the small block Chevy that was a little 350 that was in this truck before I put the big block in. But it's a 750 Holley. Vacuum secondaries, dual line, blah blah blah. Nothing real, real special other than I've I cut the choke horn off and kind of cleaned everything up, polished everything up, or it flows nice and smooth. And this has got no choke whatsoever, no fast idle, nothing. It's it's 
basically a racing carburetor if you want to call it that but I'm gonna show you guys how I how I cold start him it's it's not really that cold outside it's probably about 80 90 degrees something like that so pretty warm that's right, so the first thing I do is of course right now I'm just gonna make sure it's in neutral I don't have a safety switch on the clutch, so it'll start up in gear. It'll start with the clutch out. And what I'll do is, I'm not sure if you can see my foot, I just give it maybe a pump, a half a pump, just a little bit of fuel. And turn the key on. And that's it. He starts right up. That's a pretty typical startup from him. When it first starts up, the yeah, idle's a little bit low. It's about 600 RPM. When it warms up, it, it'll idle about 850, 900. But other than having to get in and give it a, a pump of fuel, it starts up just as easy as any fuel injection. When I was in the cab and I gave it a, a pump on the foot feed to give it a little gas before I started it up, I'm going to show you guys what that actually does out here. Now when you move this throttle this way, there's a little arm here in the cam, and this is on a holly setup. Most of them are pretty much the same on the hollies. And it pushes down on that, on this lever here, and this is your accelerator pump diaphragm inside there and it shoots fuel through the passageway up to your accelerator pump nozzle right here which they're interchangeable or you can change them out this one's got a pretty good good size squirter on it to where it shoots a pretty good size stream of fuel let me get my camera angle right here so whenever you give it throttle I hope you can see it and the lights okay it shoots a big shot of, of fuel down into the throttle or into the throttle body down into the intake. Um, of course the throttle blades open up. It just shoots straight down in there and gives your gives your engine a little extra shot of fuel to get started on. Uh, you just got to be careful if you if you pump it too much it, you could flood your engine which just means you've got too much fuel sitting in the bottom of the intake runners and too much fuel sitting on top of the pistons and it, and it just won't light. Uh, best thing to do if you flood one is hold the throttle all the way to the floor and crank it until it tries to tries to pick up and starts up and then it'll you know you just don't hold it wide open the whole time but once it starts to run and let off a little bit and and uh, it should pick up and clear out. Now, on uh, if you notice that it, this has a really big shot of fuel going through there, uh, that's not typical. I've got some. I've got some really big holes in that accelerator pump squirter. If I had had a smaller squirter on there, it, I would probably have to pump it a couple times before I started it. Uh, just to get that little bit more fuel, but I think you guys can understand that. I think what I'll do is I'll maybe simulate a a flooded situation. I'm gonna we'll give him a few shots of fuel there. Maybe that'll drown him out, and I'll show you guys how I start one up if it's flooded. So say you've got your vehicle flooded, what are you going to do? Uh, you've seen me shoot several pumps of uh, fuel straight down into the carburetor. Uh, he should be flooded by now. I'll give him an extra pump just to, just to make sure. And I'll show you guys what to do in that situation. Uh, hopefully you can see my foot down there. I've got it in neutral. 
and I'll crank the key. You see how easy he started earlier. He's cranking, crank, 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 crank. Well, he finally picked up. You can tell he's running a little rough. Just give it some gas and kind of let it clear up, burn all that extra fuel up. You'll probably see some black smoke coming out of your exhaust pipes. I'll really flood them because sometimes if they're really really flooded you'll have to hold the the throttle down to uh, to get it to pick up well that's the best thing to do in a situation if you've got one flooded just hold your foot down give it some throttle don't pump it anymore because the more you pump it the more fuel shooting that in there um, just hold your foot, hold the throttle open so it gets more air, and it'll, it'll eventually, hopefully, fire up for you and clear out. So that's what to do if you flood your flood your engine. I'll go ahead and get this air cleaner off, and we'll get started on him. Get started on starting him. So what uh, what we have here is, is a Holly, another Holly. I'm a Holly fan, so I run Hollies on most of what I can. I've got an Elderbrock on on my other short bed, but that's just temporary for right now. Anyways, this this is pretty much the same basic setup as what Buddy has, except for this one, as you can see, it has a choke horn on it uh, with the choke flap. But the rest of it works pretty much the same. This is a 600 CFM uh, vacuum secondary. Uh, still got the same accelerator pump setup that that buddy has on him, just a different fuel bowl setup. And over here is is the choke setup. It's a heat riser type choke setup. It's not set up exactly the way it's supposed to. It's supposed to have a small pipe coming out of here going down to the intake if it was a factory intake with well, this aftermarket one doesn't have doesn't have that option and this is the only choke setup I had other than manual and I really don't like the manual choke setups but there's just a you you loosen up these three screws and you can turn this and it's just got a, a thermal spring inside there that's wound up and you can turn that and it'll put more or less tension on your throttle plate or your choke plate. Uh, depends on how you want to set it up. It's I'm not going to get too deep into that right now. This is more for just a cold startup. But what happens? You see right now that the choke, the throttle, or the choke plate is open all the way. Now, if I was in the truck. Just to go go to town, get some groceries, go to work, whatever. I'd get in and I'd give them a pump. And what that does is you can see that, that eh, the choke plate closed a little bit, which it's warm enough now that it outside that it doesn't choke. It doesn't need to choke all the way. But if it was colder, it would close a lot further. And it also sets a high idle. There's some stuff going on down there that I'm not going to get into, but it actually holds your, your throttle back just a little bit to idle it up when it's cold. So that's what happens whenever you get in with a vehicle that's got a choke set up on it. You hit the throttle to pump it. It shoots the fuel down in there. It gives you a little extra fuel just like we did on Buddy. But also closes this throat choke plate now their design 
It's got a short end and a long end. You see this end's longer than, than the top side. So if this was set to where it would close almost all the way, uh, the air moving across it will actually push down on this back side and open them up a little bit if it needs more air. So say your choke is your choke is set too tight and you get to going down the highway and giving it a throttle, the air moving over it will actually open this up to uh, to give it more air so it won't choke it out. You don't want it you don't want it solid. That's the bad thing about mechanical uh, type chokes, which I don't have one set up with one of those right now to show you. But it actually holds the, the throttle plate or the choke plate at a certain position. It won't open with well, maybe they will. Anyways, I may have to edit that out. I may not. But that's uh, that's how that kind of works briefly. But I'll go in there, and I've already pumped it once. So I'll get in here and show you what I do to start cream puff. So on a warm day like today, I've already pumped it once when I was showing you how the choke works. I probably won't need to pump it again. I'll just uh, start them up. You can tell he's idling a little bit high right now. That high idle on the choke is set. He's idling about 1600 RPM. It's a little bit high, but I've got to set. It's got two settings on that high idle. Right now it's on the, the fastest one. Now if it was cold outside, it would it would be even, it would be better because it'd have to be idling slower, but the choke is set more. See, me, see what the choke is doing. Can you tell it's got the the choke plate open more because it's pulling enough air. And I tap the throttle and the idle goes back down. Now if the choke is off, uh, if it was colder outside, the choke would stay on longer because that spring inside there, once that spring heats up, it starts to turn and releases tension on that choke plate. Right now it's warm enough that it's pretty much relieved that doesn't, doesn't need the tension on it it doesn't need to be choked because it's warm enough so it's 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 set at the neutral position I guess or all the way open position I guess you could say and he's idling about 750 750 rpm yeah not really much to it if for some reason you go to start it and it tries to hit and it doesn't and you haven't pumped it a bunch sometimes you may have to pump it a couple times to get enough fuel in there for it to really start uh, this truck doesn't need that it just needs one pump and it's it's fine but right now I mean it'll start right back up This one's got an Elderbrock carburetor on it. It's got a, I think it's got an electric choke, but it's not hooked up right now. Uh, and it's been sitting for probably two or three weeks without being started or cranked. I don't even know if it'll turn over. We'll, we'll see. The battery may be dead and we may not even worry about it. Who, who knows what we might find underneath the hood. All right, no critters. Now this is an Elderbrock. I believe it's uh, I think it's just a 500 CFM. Actually, it was the carburetor that was on Cream Puff when I got him. Uh, the carburetor that was on this truck was in the best of shape. 
so I swapped it out. Uh, kind of basically the same as, as a Holly, as far as it's got accelerator pump. When you when you hit the throttle, it moves this lever up, pushes this plunger down, and it shoots fuel up through the, the squirter down inside there. Uh, it's got kind of the same type of you know adjustment as the Hollies do. It's kind of a standard type thing on most carburetors that has a, a choke like this. You can you can adjust that, loosen up the screws, and and turn that one way or the other to either set the choke tighter or looser. Uh, but right now it's just set where the where the choke really don't even work. I think. Yeah. So this would be a no choke. There's no fuel in the no fuel in the fuel filter. Probably no fuel in the carburetor, so it's gonna have to crank a little while. But this would be a good 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 video or a good shot of of how to start one that's been sitting for quite a while. But what I'll do since he's backed up in this in this barn, I'm not gonna push him out. He's got a flat tire. Let's we'll We'll just deal with it the way it is, but I'll just have the camera set up watching the where you guys can watch the carburetor and see what it does. Hopefully you guys could see what was going on and watch the fuel get pumped up into there. Uh, the carburetor was pretty much dry. You could also you you could see that throttle lever working as I was trying to pump it to get some fuel shot down into the intake to get it started up. Actually, don't start up too bad for sitting for a couple weeks, uh, especially for an old worn out 305. Hopefully, one of these days it'll have a, a decent 350 or maybe even a big block but that's the cold start on uh, on this one there we have it folks three different cold start scenarios first one no choke horn no choke whatsoever the second one had a functioning choke uh, of course it was warm enough it really didn't set itself too much uh, and the third scenario was one that's been sitting for several weeks and the fuel fuel system was pretty well dry had to pump up the carburetor and all that stuff so three different scenarios hopefully that's covered some of the basics on on cold starts i want to thank uh i can't remember who it was the name of the guy that suggested doing this video on my comments on youtube i want to thank him for giving me the idea to do this not something it's not something that i probably would have come up with on my own uh I assume, you know, I, I think, you know, everybody should know how to start up a carburetor or a carbureted vehicle, but, you know, I realize, you know, that's, that's not the case. There's, there's people that are still new to this stuff, even though it's old technology. Uh, hopefully it's helped some people out. If you have any questions, comment down below, uh, or hit me up on Facebook. Go to my Facebook page at Square Body Stuff. Uh, you can send me some questions there. Also check me out on Instagram. I've been posting a little bit more on it. And for sure, like, share, and subscribe to this channel on YouTube uh, so we can keep this channel going. I'm trying to be more entertaining. It's just not working out real well. I'm, I just don't know what to do. I'm not very entertaining. But I'll show you guys some square body stuff. That's about all I got. So until next time... Uh, you know, if you have any questions, just give me a holler. I'm going to put wrap this thing up. I'm going to go find me a drink. That's what I'm going to do.
suck at this. <laughs>